This episode of Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures is sponsored by Linode. Hey guys, how you all doing? Really, that's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because we have a MacBook in the layer, but it's not just your typical everyday aluminum unibody MacBook Pro. This is a little bit special. This is a MacBook without Pro in the name. This was a very short-lived model of Apple's MacBook line. They went right back to plastic after this. It only lasted, what, less than a year? And it needs some work done to it. So you're coming with me? Let's take a look at it. Yes, this is Apple's aluminum MacBook from 2008. It did not last that long. They ditched it and went back to the plastic. Apple doesn't seem to stick with the MacBook too long. Every time they bring the name back, they seem to kill it off after a while. Oh well. What needs to be done to it is a few things. First of all, it needs to be wiped out. It was donated to me by somebody, so I need to wipe the hard drive. While we're at it, let's have a little more fun. Let's throw an SSD in there, because we can. Remember, one of the cool features of these MacBooks was the easy access door on the bottom. No new Apple MacBook has that kind of functionality, right? So we might as well take advantage of this easy access door and throw an SSD in there. And that's actually gonna be easier than normal because I actually have some proper tools now. I know some people were bitching and moaning about my improper tools, but that's okay. Greg Rutke from Rutke Mods swooped in, saved my ass, and bought me this freaking Pro Tool Kit from iFixit. So thank you very much, Greg. We'll use this to get the drive inside of here. Okay, so let's boot her up. I'm assuming it's a her. Don't really know how you sex one of these things. Let's do that. Go into the boot picker. I know I was experimenting with Snow Leopard lately. In fact, I did an installation sensation with this and Windows XP. In a previous episode, it was really fun. Definitely give it a watch after this one. But we're gonna need to bust it out again, the old trusty disc that Steve donated to me. Thank you, Steve. And uh, we're gonna use this to wipe the hard drive. Well, this is awkward. The disc actually isn't in here. <laughs> okay. Um... I wonder if I left it in the Mac Mini from that last episode. Ah, sure enough. Nailed that one. Left it in the optical drive. Don't do that, kids. If you're gonna unplug a computer, make sure all the media is out of it first. There we go. Snow Leopard, here to save us again. Okay, let's boot off of that. Okay, not quite sure why it did that. This is version 10.6.3, and I know that this is running 10.6.3, so it should be compatible. Try it again. Hey, it's doing something. Okay, I was thinking maybe for a moment we'd have to do some optical drive repair like we did on the iMac G5. That was a great video log. If you haven't seen that one, do check it out. Okay, there it is. Ready to rock and roll. So we're gonna go verbose mode this because we're cool like that. Oh! Uh... It looks like it panicked. It's still writing log information. Stop! What are you doing? Well, this is an interesting panic. I've never seen a panic quite like this. Well, now it's saying media not present, so I doubt inserting the DVD again is gonna do anything, but we can try. It just ejected it by itself, so no... Yeah, it's not liking something, Sue. For grins and giggles, let's just do it without verbose mode. Being weird again. I wonder if the optical drive is actually having a problem. But see, you put it back in and now it's fine. Hey, if anyone can explain that, 
I'm all ears. Freaking tell me. That's weird. What the? Sh Come on. Third time's the charm? I mean, I could just image this to a flash drive if this is going to be a problem. <laughs> now it sounds like it's working. I don't know how you explain that. It's just luck. Okay. Take two. So far, so good. What? Are you freaking kidding me? The whole thing just turned off. I jinxed it. The crazy Ken curse. You know, there's probably still some people that don't believe in it, but boy, the, the past few episodes and the live broadcast have convinced a lot more people that it's real. This is another great example. Let's get the disc out of here. I'll make an image of it. What the shit? Um... I've never heard an optical drive make those sounds. I think the optical drive is busted. You know, I think we're gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna go image this. Be right back. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Step one, we're gonna have some fun because we gotta make sure we still have fun. We're just gonna use my daily driver with Etcher. You've probably seen me do this before. It's pretty routine by now. And we'll use the trusty external USB super drive. Now, before any of you guys ask, Ken, why don't you just use the freaking super drive on the MacBook Pro? I'll tell you why. It won't work. It just won't. Why? Because Apple. It just won't work. Plug it into a MacBook Air, it'll work. Plug it into a MacBook, nope. So, if you can explain that, go nuts. So I'm gonna make a bit of a MacBook sandwich here. Disk utility. New image, image from the DVD drive, and save. We're gonna hope and pray that it works. And then we'll throw the image into Etcher, and Etcher will restore the image to the flash drive. And then everything should work, and it should be sunshine and lollipops everywhere. I highly doubt that's gonna happen. So far, this tech video log has been nothing but failure. This is taking a little bit longer than I expected, but no worry, it's almost done. Good, operation successful, that's what we like to see. So, throw it into Etcher. The image does not appear to contain a partition table and might not be recognized or bootable. Okay, I'm gonna say continue, might as well try it. There we go, it's, oh. Invalid typed array length. Something went wrong. Okay, I'm going the super duper route now. You're about to erase transfer, da 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 da. Yes, we're gonna erase it. Copy the data over. I've done this before with Super Duper, so I don't see why it wouldn't work. Uh, oh. Failed to enable ownership on transfer. Okay. Ignore ownership is already turned on. Okay then. Huh, crap. Okay, so I reformatted the flash drive. It did not have journaling turned on. I have no idea if that's gonna help at all. But also the date and time on it was like at the beginning of like Unix time. It was like December 1969, six in the morning or whatever, it, 6 p.m. It was, yeah, the date was weird. It was all weird. Let's just nuke it, start fresh. So let's open up super duper. Okay, you're about to erase and copy. Yes, please. 5% so far, good. So it looks like it's actually moving somewhere. It is a USB 2 flash drive, so it's going to be kind of slow, but it'll at least work, hopefully. Remounting, boom, okay. Yank the flash drive out, and now, ladies, gentlemen, etc., none of the above, everything in between, we're gonna switch over to the MacBook. Boot her up into the boot picker. This better freaking work. Otherwise that 90 minutes or so was just wasted. Snow Leopard, that's a good start. Now let's go into verbose mode. And here we go, booting into the installer. Hopefully it doesn't explode like last time. And there it is. That booted up way quicker than a DVD. And I gotta tell you, I know I sound like a broken record, but I love the old Aqua and I love the old Aurora wallpaper. So freaking cool. All right, let's use English as the main language and let's get the show on the road. And disk utility. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this disk just because the 
previous owner requested that to reiterate. And uh, I will actually do more of a zero out later, but that's gonna take a while. So for the sake of time, I mean, I don't know, how long is this gonna take? Let's just see, because a zero out can take a little while. Mac was extended journaled, erase, and let's see. Maybe it won't take too freaking long. Estimated time, three minutes. I highly doubt that, but 38 minutes, yes. You know, we're gonna skip it for now. A quick format where we don't actually erase the data, we just format the disk. It's not a true secure erase, but I can take care of that. On my own suffering time. I don't wanna waste your time, no, that would be horrible. We're gonna shut it down and open it up, throw an SSD in here, because speed. All right, time to open this guy up. Now, like I talked about earlier, this particular MacBook has one of those interesting, cool, short-lived features. It's called a door. Or I guess it's really more of a, a panel. So, push this in, flip it up. Bon appetit. You got the battery, and you got the hard drive. Piece of cake. Take the battery out, and we got the one screw there. And again, thanks to Greg, I have this handy dandy iFixit kit with 64 bits. So plenty of tools to make things work great. And then this bracket will come out just like that. And then <laughs> I forgot about the flex cable. <laughs> Remember, these are tech video logs, not tutorials. You don't wanna really do what I'm doing. Okay, and uh, there we go. The hard drive is out safe and sound. And then you take that out and you put the SSD in. So here's the SSD. And I guess uh, if I was touching more sensitive electronics, I would use the ESD bracelet that comes with the kit, but I'm not really that deep into the computer. Uh, but yes, keep that in mind. Anyway, I've gone without an ESD bracelet my whole life and I've never shorted anything out. I forgot one important thing. You need to take the torque screws out of there. T6. And just unscrew all of the four screws there. So now we'll put the screws in the SSD there. Actually, if it weren't for that collaboration episode with Draga 1, I wouldn't have this spare SSD. So. Thank you, Draga. One more little screw, and Bob's your uncle. I'm pretty sure you have an uncle named Bob, because everyone does. Okay, back on the flex cable. Look at that. Switch the bit. Back to our Phillips head, and screw it in. There you go. Way fewer steps and way fewer screws than on the newer MacBooks, right? So, take our Apple battery. And there we are, the switch frickin' goes back in place when you put the panel on. Engineering, okay. That's all she wrote. Let's boot it up, plug in the flash drive, and install Snow Leopard on a 2008 MacBook with a frickin' SSD, oh yeah. Flash drive. EFI boot with the Catalina logo. Interesting. I don't know why that's there. It's supposed to be Snow Leopard, but all right, what the hell? Shit. Oh, you know what? It's picking up the SSD on the inside, that's what it's doing. That's what that was, that's what I needed, there we go. Yeah, the SSD on the inside was from the Catalina experiment, which if you haven't seen those episodes, go check them out. Here we are, old friend, back in the installer. Okay, continue. I read it all, I'm just really fast. I don't feel so good about this. Let's make sure the SSD is formatted because it's probably got some barnacles and crust down there. Yep, that's what I thought. Two partitions, one it's probably not gonna be able to read because it's APFS. So let's give it a good kick in the pants with one partition. We'll just call it Macintosh HD because we are original. 256 gig SSD, Mac OS extended journaled, and 
GUID. That's exactly what we need to boot on Intel, right? So let's hit partition and it should work. That looks good to go. Let's quit out of there. Macintosh HD and we'll customize this. Let's put Rosetta on here for PowerPC app compatibility, QuickTime 7 for older video codec support. Now, language translations, we probably don't need that because I speak English very goodly. And uh, fonts, yeah, we don't really need fonts and I haven't printed anything in the past like 30 years. So I think we're good there. Save some space, right? Okay, and boom, install. I'm not connected to a power source, but that's okay because we like to live dangerously, right? Continue. Okay, so this is gonna take a little bit, probably a little longer than 20 minutes. We can also watch the log as it goes by, but when it's done, it should be really speedy. And while we're waiting for this to finish, I just wanna talk about something else that's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> Linode. Hey, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable to host your own app, site, service, or whatever the heck you want in the cloud. Whether you're a Linux junkie, not like me, <laughs> or just want to tinker with code. You can use Linode for either of those. It's a do-it-yourself solution if you like to get into the nitty gritty of hosting your own professional service. But if you want easy, which pretty much I would do, there's plenty of one-click apps to deploy WordPress, a personal VPN, heck, even Minecraft. We used to play Minecraft on this channel way back when. If you've ever started with those entry-level hosting services that only allowed pre-configured setups, which by the way are lame, Linode is your step up from that stuff, guys. It's fast, all-in-one, and easy to configure cloud computing. So whether you're hosting your own website, an app, a coding project, or you just need a place to keep something cool live on the internet, Linode is here for you. Oh, and because you're here, and because we're all best friends, I'm gonna give you $20 free on your new account. Just use my code COMPCLAN20. Or if you don't like typing in codes, click the link in the description. You'll be glad you did. All right, let's check back in on Snow Leopard. Okay, we have about 17 minutes remaining. The kind of thing that sucks is the bottleneck is the freaking flash drive. The SSD is fast, but USB 2 flash drive, not so much. And remember, this is a MacBook, not a MacBook Pro. So no FireWire. Yeah, I remember that being a complaint. This was a really significant release. It just didn't last very long. I mean, the MacBook Pro adopted this design and that lasted a long time, but the MacBook itself didn't. But when you think about it, this was the first MacBook slash MacBook Pro with this unibody design, the all-in-one glass trackpad, the chiclet style backlit keyboard, the glossy display. But yeah, overall, good stuff. Oh, mini display port. This was the first Mac to have mini display port as well. They pushed that with their notebooks. Wow, that was quick. Way faster than that Mac Mini episode. Mechanical hard drives can go suck a duck. Okay, let's restart. You know what's coming. I know you know. We all know. The intro video. Yes, this was the last Mac OS X release to have an intro video. That was one of the cool things about it, about the system and Apple just got rid of it. Oh well. Yeah, that's my jam right there. Wiki, wiki, wiki. Okay, setup assistant. United States. Last I checked, we were there. Continue. Don't transfer data. Create an account. My name is Crazy Ken. Don't wear it out. My password is nothing because there's not really anything going on on this computer. Nowadays, I think it forces you to use a password, but you know, with security and privacy concerns nowadays, that's probably a good thing. Connecting to Apple. I know I did this joke on the last episode, but I'm doing it again. What the heck? This guy just installed Snow Leopard. Didn't we stop supporting that thing like five minutes after it came out? He should be installing Catalina. I'm gonna report this to Tim Cook. That's how I picture the Apple spies sound. Select a picture. Am I a prickly cactus? Or a ferocious cheetah? Or a confused dog? Or freedom? I'm freedom, even though I'm trapped 10 stories underground. Okay, let's not black out the planet this time, ready? Type it in really, shit, I blacked out the planet already. Yeah, uh, I couldn't type in Chicago quick enough. Chicago. And here's the features we can use. We've been through that in the last episode. So here we go, menu bar dock, way quicker on the SSD. That is great. So we'll do a couple speed tests, yeah? See how fast this SSD really is? And so far, so good. Let's take a look at the specs, because specs apparently mean everything. JK. Anyway, 1063, 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo, two gigabytes of RAM, maybe in the future I'll 
upgrade the RAM because that's not too much. And a quarter terabyte SSD. Fan freaking tastic. Let's eject the flash drive. Good. Looking pretty good, man. Well, this is just me being an idiot. I was looking up the Blackmagic disk speed test program and I typed it into the address bar. <laughs> I forgot you have to come over here and type it into the Google bar because this is what, Safari 4? Safari 404. That's an interesting version number for a web browser. This is not a real good test for SSD performance, but just for now, let's just open up a bunch of stuff. I will get some files and we can do some tests later. But for now, let's just see how quick it's it's gonna open up apps. Let's just start with one simple thing first, like calendar. All right, pretty quick. How about automator? Pretty quick. Okay, how about all of them? Watch them bounce in the dock, there's the dashboard. All right, yeah, we're, um. We're cruising along here. iChat, the setup assistants are all here. There's front row. Ah, uh, yes, front row. Oh my gosh, I feel so nostalgic. Yeah, this thing is performing really well. I tell you, you put an SSD into something and it gives it new life, and Draga knows that for sure. But yeah, I mean, graphics are performing okay. I can zoom in and out. And it looks like we can quit the applications really fast. 2008 machine, but with an SSD, it is basically unstoppable. Plus, Snow Leopard is just a really solid OS. Cool, okay, I'm gonna put some sample files on here and we'll do some further testing. I also just remembered the developer tools are on the Snow Leopard installer, so we could install an old version of Xcode. Man, oh man, I think that was the first version of Xcode I started Cocoa development on. I did practice it for a while and then I kinda went, and this is not really my thing. <laughs> I also have some movie files, so we just have some large files to experiment with scrubbing and playback and file duplication speed. And I also have Xbench, because why the hell not? Let's just run Xbench. So that's gonna copy, and let's go to optional installs. Welcome to Xcode. It's good to be back, I've missed you. Unix dev support, 10.4 support system tools. You know what? Let's just throw it all on here, huh? We have space, and we have speed, and we don't have a password, so that's easy to do. Okay, so that's installing, and I have some things over here. Let's clean this up, arrange by name. Installation done, so we'll play with some of that later. Let's take off the flash drive. Okay, so as a quick test, we have a QuickTime movie here. This is 4K. Let's see, H.264, let's just see how it scrubs. Decent speed, I mean, it's gonna drop some frames, but it's a really beefy file. Oh yeah, QuickTime used to be glossy. Yeah, the whole system was kinda glossy back then. Really changing everything, so today... Whoa, 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 you guys, you idiots, when I said the show was about the... Oh yeah, it can't really do 4K playback, and the scrubbing is kinda slow, but you have to remember, this computer is from 2008. It was worth a shot. Okay, but together, I just wanted to see some copying speed. So these files together are about a gigabyte, so if I were just to duplicate them, let's see how fast it would go. And time me. Yeah, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it was about nine seconds to duplicate a gigabyte of data. Not too shabby. Let's open up Xbench, but before we do Xbench, that's gonna be our final thing. Let's do one other thing that starts with X and that would be Xcode. Let's just hop in here quickly. I don't have any projects to tinker with. I don't even know if I have my old Coco projects anywhere. I have no idea where those would be saved. Oh yeah, Quartz Composer applications. Oh man, I'm getting some mega nostalgia here. I wonder if I even still have the book. I was at a Barnes and Noble and I picked up a book called Coco for Dummies or something like that. And that's what got me into practicing this. In fact, I posted one of my earlier applications that I wrote. <laughs> it was a web browser called Lightning Link. I posted that to Patreon. You can get that as a bonus reward on there. But that wasn't the first thing I made. The first thing I made was actually a calculator and it still runs on Mojave. I'm pretty sure it runs on Catalina as well. I might throw that on the Patreon as a bonus as well. Okay, so we need to do a new file. Let's see, a user interface. An XIB file would be pretty nice. Let's uh, open that up. 
And it's, you know, it's kind of funny. We were just talking about Interface Builder on the Next Cube episode because Interface Builder was on Next Step before it moved into Mac OS. Let's just do what Steve Jobs did in that one demo, right? Let's do a slider and like a text display, text label, text field we'll say, right? And we'll make a connection between the slider and the field and we'll say, ooh, take value from, <laughs> take integer value from, minimum, maximum 100, there we go, and see if it worked. Hey, it did, there we go. And we have our little number slider there, it just does it in real time there. All right, we're gonna close out of Interface Builder. We'll save those changes, why not? Maybe we'll make a revolutionary app with it someday. So thank you, Xcode. That was a nice uh, mini blast of the past. Now, Xbench time. Oh yes, let's do, let's do all the things. And what are we gonna get? Let's find out. Here we are, we're doing the thread test, memory test, this thing. The graphics test is always fun. If you um, have potential seizure problems, do not watch this part. Cover the screen with your hand. Like so. Whoa, look, oh, sh well, that's making me dizzy. So a score, 201.40. Disk test, yeah, 388.66. I was gonna say that's probably pretty good. And you know what? We didn't even need the black magic thing because we have our results right here. So it looks like sequential uncached write, 168 megabytes per second, uncached write, and then read. Oh yeah, read, 215. Megabytes per second, that scored a 428. Yeah, so the SSD is pretty freaking nice. You know, it's good to have a successful experiment every once in a while. It makes the bad times more bearable. You gotta remember those good times because not all of the times are good. So I'm calling this one a big win. You know, this might be a good candidate for some future experiments. So if anyone has any suggestions, hardware or software, just let me know in a comment down below. And feel free to stick around because I do live episodes now, so make sure you're subscribed and have the notifications on because this experience with a live show is very fun and I wanna make sure you can catch the next live event. There's also over 100 other episodes of Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures. It's a super bingeable show. This was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed and there's more to come. Thanks for sticking with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on.